Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this new week that we have stepped into. Listen, God is doing something in your life, and I'm glad to be part of it. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, because you see, these things I'm teaching you, they are very important. I'm giving you good knowledge, good information. And, and when you begin to apply these things in your life, you will begin to see the result, praise God. And, and when you begin to see the result, that becomes your testimony. Oh, bless God, bless God, bless God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you for this week. Your word will come with utmost clarity. And every year I will be impacted and bring your grace upon us all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, Jesus said you will teach us all things. And you will guide us into all truth. That's exactly what we expect today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let burdens be removed. He let yokes be destroyed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, last week I was talking to you about the tithe. And I'm going to continue that this week, going even deeper. You see, like I told you last week, you know, certain people, including preachers, began to attack um, tithing. Now, many of them were functioning by ignorance. I'm telling you the truth. By ignorance. You know, I, I put up a challenge one time. I said, look, there is no one, and I still say it now, there is no one who can say the Holy Spirit told me that we should not tithe anymore. No one. I dare say it. No one. You see, when they want to say these things, or when they want to say we shouldn't tithe, you know what they do? They begin to bring letters. Yeah, that's what they do. They compare letters. And what did the Bible say? The letter kills. The letter kills. It is the spirit that gives life. The Bible, without the spirit of God, will land you in confusion. Yeah. You see, that, you know, that's why I keep saying this thing. And I'll keep saying it until it sinks down into your hearts. The Bible is not the word of God. It contains the word of God, yes, so don't get me wrong. But it is not the word. Now, when I say it's not, I've explained this and I'll keep explaining it. When I say the Bible is not the word of God, there's something I'm trying to knock off your head. You don't carry it and say, this is the word of God. So when you're reading it, everything you read, that is God that I've spoken. No, sir. No. It's a book of stories. It's a book of testimonies of people who received the word of God. Why are they written in the Bible? Because they received the word of God. Every one story in the Bible, check it out. Every one story in the Bible has to do with this. The word of God came. They acted on it. You saw their results, you saw their end. So there are lots of examples in here. See? And now someone takes it and says, this is the word of God. So when, when they read one part, they use one part to counter another part. And then they say, this, is, this came later. So God is countering this other statement. Come on now. <clears throat> we are not that foolish, praise God. No. What do we do with the scriptures? I told you on Friday, I said, we fulfill the scriptures. We don't argue scriptures. We fulfill the scriptures. If you encounter the same God that is spoken in the Bible, your actions, your results will remind someone of what is written in the Bible. Now, that's how we call it a fellowship. See? You know, John said in 1 John chapter 1, he says, Ah, fellowship. He said, he said, these things we write unto you so that you also will have fellowship with us. 
Yeah, that's what he said. He said, we are writing these things to you so that you also, we have fellowship with us. What does it mean? You will experience the same thing we're experiencing. Now, that's why we have all these stories written in the Bible. So when I begin to experience this, then I wonder, what is this? And I take my Bible and I'm reading. And I, oh, 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 I'm in company with these guys. I'm in company with Elijah. I'm in company with Joshua. I'm in company with Moses. I'm in, com I'm in company with Peter, James, and John. See, that's, what, that's, that's the reason for testimonies. That's why I've, you know, I keep saying, most of what the church does today, you know, you call out people, oh, testimony time, hey, praise God. And then you call out people and then you stand them up, you put the microphone on your mouth and say, no, go straight to the point. Go straight to the point. There is no go straight to the point in testimony. And when they say go straight to the point, what do they want to say? I didn't have a car for the past two years or for the past five years, but brethren, last week after pastor preached, I believed the message and I went home, someone called me and... So cut the long story short, I have a brand new car. Hey, everybody, hey, that's not a testimony. It's not. You are just making an announcement that you just got a car. That's what you're doing. It's not a testimony. Because what are you testifying then? See? And sometimes churches try to make it about the pastor's message. You know, So pastor declared a word that this week a miracle is going to take place in your life. And I believe that word. And to cut the long story short, brethren, uh, you know, now the purpose of that is trying to tell people that when pastor declares something, it is really working. That's not really a testimony about Christ Jesus. It's a testimony about your pastor or the church. Since I started worshiping in this church, I like, you know, no matter how good it sounds, you're not really giving a testimony in Christ Jesus. And I'm not saying this to offend you. I'm just telling you plain truth so you draw the line. Understand what you're doing. See, when you want to give a testimony in Christ Jesus, it must be a testimony that when someone you, you are in Nigeria, you share that testimony. When someone in Iceland hear your testimony, he can put the same thing to work over there in Iceland and he will get the same result. That's what a testimony is. So that is why we testify. And that's what John meant when he says, look, what, what, what? the whole book of John was, was what? His testimony. <laughs> you see, that's why testimonies are not just about, I got a new job, I got a new house, I, 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 I met arm robbers, but they didn't rob me. That's not just what a testimony. That's, in fact, that's baby testimonies. <laughs> we won't begin talking about what we got, what we got, or what, what uh, we did. Those are baby testimonies. I'm telling you the truth. The real testimony is, a, is about our encounters with the Lord. The things he taught us and the result we are making out of what he taught us. How our lives are getting better by the things he has taught us. That is what the real testimony is. So John says, I'm writing these things to you so that you also, we have fellowship with us. And then he says, and truly, our fellowship is with the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Yeah. Who am I fellowshipping with? I'm fellowshipping with the Father. And because I'm fellowshipping with the Father, I am getting these results. Now, what are the results? The best result is a renewal of your mind. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. The greatest testimony you can have is the renewal of your mind. Now, the more you submit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, the more he will teach you. And when he teaches you, the proof that you have learned is that your mind be renewed. You may be holding on to a certain belief or a certain thought, teaching or a certain thought in your mind. And then you approach the Lord Jesus Christ and he tells you, son, that's not how this is. And then you say, oh, really? I'll never forget this happened several years ago, you know, back then in school. We, we went out on evangelism. And so, you know how we go on evangelism, we were going room to room. So we got into this room and 
we were preaching, you know, then, you know, you see, got to this stage where I said, are you born again? Everybody claims to be born again, you see, <laughs> except you meet a, a, a real Muslim and then, but when you meet anyone who goes to church, like, are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. You know, so, you know, the, 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 the question went a step further. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? You see, so we asked these folks, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Now, they were two ladies and three guys, you know, so, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? The two ladies says no. One of the guys said yes. The other two said no. So we began to talk to them about why you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now it led us to salvation and we began to, you know, just share and share and share. And when we were done, I asked the question, are you ready to be filled with the Holy Ghost now? And then the two guys said, yes, they are. The lady says, no, they are not. I said, why? So they don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Now, at that point, I got charged in my spirit. I got vexed in my spirit, praise God. And I said, okay, everybody stand up. Because this, I just felt in my spirit, I just want to see power. Okay, everybody stand up. And then they stood up. So I said, just begin to pray and just bless the name of the Lord. So we all began to pray. So I went to the first guy, laid hands on him. He began to speak in other tongues. Went to the second guy, laid hands on him. He began to speak in another tongue. Now, by the time I was done with the second guy, the I felt an anointing rest upon me. And I turned. Now, this was not out of my will. I was just being moved by the Spirit of God. So I turned to the first lady and I put my hand just beside her, her mouth. And then I was watching. I didn't know what was going to happen. And suddenly, she went, <laughs> she began to speak. You know, I said, whoa. <laughs> the same thing, I went to the second one. The same thing happened. And then they began to speak in other tongues. And, you know, we all prayed and rejoiced and prayed and, and rejoiced. And then we finished and left. Now, I've never seen that happen before personally. I've never seen such a thing. Now, this was many years ago, praise <laughs> God. I've never seen this happen in my life before. So I was like, wow, I've learned something new today. From this day, everyone I meet will speak in tongues. That's what I was telling myself. And then I was just rejoicing and rejoicing. And then the word of the Lord came to me. And God said, son, those ladies did not get filled with the Holy Spirit. Whoa. I said, no, Lord, they did. Because when Peter went to Cornelius, the Bible said, for we heard them speak with tongues. I said, Lord, I heard them speak with tongues. The Lord said, yes, they spoke in tongues, but I was not in them. So what happened? I, I didn't do anything wrong in my, in my, in my reasoning. I didn't, I, I didn't conjure any other thing. I, I was praying in the Holy Ghost, and they prayed in the Holy Ghost. And then the Lord said, I will explain to you what happened. And he told me what happened. He said, I knew you would not leave them. So what you actually did is, you caused, of course by his help, you caused my anointing to rest upon them and did things against their will. Really? <laughs> I said, wow. So that is possible. Yes, it is. Now you understand when, remember Saul, Saul was looking for David and he sent his servants to Samuel because David had ran to Samuel. David ran to Samuel. So Saul sent his servants to Samuel. And when they got there, Samuel was prophesying. And the moment the servants got there, they began to prophesy too. And they brought the message to Saul said, King, <laughs> the men you sent, they have turned to prophets. And then Paul, Saul said, I'm going. And then he got there. He too began to prophesy, fell on the floor, prophesying. Now, because they began to prophesy, would you now say that these men are now prophets? And that's what the Holy Spirit was explaining to me. Now, you see, I had, that this is the point, I had a situation that happened of something that has happened in the Bible before. See? So the Lord said, no, they didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost. Those girls are not born again. And I learned a valuable lesson that there is that, that still affects me till this day in, in ministering to people. They weren't saved. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. And guess what? Guess what? I didn't tell you this part. After we all spoke in tongues and stopped, I, I was, because I was excited, I said, wow, what happened to you? They said, they don't know. Say, you spoke in tongues. 
I said, yeah, we're saying something. Say, yeah. So do you now believe in the Holy Ghost? Guess what? They told me no. <laughs> I just told them, I said, well, there's a witness. You spoke in tongues. So it's your business right now. And then the Holy Spirit began to explain all this to me. What's going on? I had a kind of fellowship that happened with someone in the Bible. So that's what the Bible is meant for. We experience things being led by the Spirit of God. And then we see it in the Bible. And that's fellowship. So I know the same Spirit was walking in them. The same Spirit that was walking in me. Praise God. I'm going to continue here tomorrow. Our time is up. But listen, we're going to have a great week. God bless you. Bye-bye.